Well, welcome back, everyone. Stories of the Week is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of ERP solutions to protect systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. Because cyber. And by Pony Express. Check out the community edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean pen testing machine for all those hard to reach places. There's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. If you want to know how to kill a laptop with a cocktail, they're the people for that too. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And we're back with some special guests for this segment, for our Stories of the Week segment. We have Jerry and Andrew from the Defensive Security Podcast. Hey guys, how's it going? Woohoo! Hey, how are you guys? Thanks Good. for having us. Hey, okay, guys. so that's Thanks. Andrew, and then Jerry's on. Hi, Jerry, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Good, and good. Jerry's headset looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, your headset does look familiar. It looks like the same one that I have on right here. That's very nice, very nice. You have good taste in headsets, Jerry. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> Larry, you're, what are you holding? Over th- is that? What do you mean, what am I holding? You have a very large <laughs> thing. In my lap. Between your legs. Because only in New England <laughs> do you oh, stir yeah. drinks. <laughs> yes, I need it. Could you, I, my, my drink needs to be chilled up a little. Could you, could you do that? Yes, thank you. Can, drip. It, it's drip. Drip. can you just stir it? Just stick it right in there, Larry. Just, yes, that's, thank you. <laughs> it's running down my arm. Thank you. I really wish we had video right now. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, uh, I'm kind of glad um. we don't, actually. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Stop licking it, Paul. <laughs> it's spraying everywhere, In Larry. 15 seconds. Stop licking your nut. <laughs> All right. There's a, puddle All right. On, there's a puddle on the floor. Yeah. Can we not have that in studio now? It's it's like wicked wicked cold <laughs> in Rhode Island. Just throw that at some <laughs> random car in the parking lot. Um, there you go. Thanks. There you go. Thanks for that. <laughs> Here, let me wipe it off your chin too. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so kind, Larry. Oh my crotch is all wet. <laughs> It's Just like for the 20s. benefit of our listeners, we are really serious about this podcast. Oh. <laughs> this, is a, this is a serious business, Joff. Oh, my crotch is all it's wet. Just like in the rest business. area. <laughs> <laughs> and here's where Paul loses control of the show. No. That it would imply you had control to in begin the first with. place. All right. All righty. What are we talking about first, Larry? <sighs> I hate to say it. Superfish. What is th- that? You don't know the superfish? Uh, Len- Lenovo's superfish. I tried superfish. not to oh, yeah. pay attention I tried to not it. To read it but, it's, I know. It's, it's so it's, cliche but, at this point. No, I don't know if it's cliche. It's just a dumb fucking move. So, yeah, Lenovo in- pre installs some software that does ad insertion <laughs> um, <laughs> by. Um, Breaking SSL by trusting another certificate authority for you that can um, break essentially SSL for all the sites. <coughs> uh, no errors in your browser, and now they can do inspection and replace ads and all that good stuff. So, and, so they uh, man in the middle of the laptop on did. the laptop level. I mean, who on earth thought this was a good idea? Lenovo. They Interestingly, they got good money for that. Oh, that, yeah, that and did. I just read a story a little bit ago where some senior marketing exec is surprised at the backlash. Like, <laughs> we had no idea. We thought people would like this. Seriously, that's what they said. Hmm. Yeah. Now, I've also heard that they uh, Lenovo has removed it from their, quote, install chain, so no new ones are being out there. And they've also uh, demanded that uh, Superfish uh, disable their services until they can come up with a patch which I don't know how the hell they're going to do because it's in it's the way SSL works. So I don't know how they're going to fix this. I don't think they can. I did have a random thought is if it's this <coughs> easy to lest SSL is SSL flawed? No. Say it isn't so. <laughs> <laughs> Perish the thought. I mean obviously it, it, you've got you know, ownership of the endpoint, you can put whatever you want on there. But if it's that easy to man in the middle, I mean, we know this, but they can break SSL. They can break it in a very tr- non-transparent way so that they can interpret and interrupt all of your SSL connections just by loading a toolbar, in essence. Is this reliable enough? 
I, well, I think it's doing a little bit more than loading a toolbar. Cause well, yeah, they, yeah they're, I'm, I mean, they're, I'm exaggerating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, it's it's still not much, and it comes installed by default from someone you allegedly trust from your quote supply chain. Mm. Wait, where's the Lenovo factory right now? Where all the other factories are in China? China. <laughs> what he said. <clears throat> um, along the lines of the uh, browser thing, mm. did you guys see the uh, Mozilla's flash killer Shumway appears in Firefox Night Lies? Uh, so this is making its way through the... Night Lies? You mean Nightlies? Nightlies. Sorry. <laughs> did I say Night Lies? What, what is, is wrong, wrong with me that? tonight? <laughs> Mems, that's what's wrong with you. Has <sighs> anyone checked Paul for a stroke? I'm just <laughs> he, Yes, he stroked it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, oh, go without bad. saying. That, that was um, my folks. <laughs> I think he was the only one. <laughs> I, I, what, what, is, what is wrong with me tonight? I just, it must be the cold pole. You must be Jack, having mini strokes. Jack's not making drinks. That's what it is. I think that's what it is. That's it. Your 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 alcohol blood ratio is off. That's it what is. is. It is. So what do you guys think? Would you rather have... So tell us about the night lies. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Because I heard you tell your wife some every night. Like, honey, I swear it's eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes, it goes more like this, honey. She really is just a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened like that before, I swear. <laughs> All right, so tell us about Shumway. <laughs> Is it? Did I at least pronounce that right? I think so. I don't know. All these newfangled names. So for Scumway oh, is no. an effort to create a web native runtime implementation of the Flash file format. Wow. Um, and I got you. Got to, you know. I suppose applaud them for this. I don't know, Paul. What do you think? About <laughs> yeah, applaud them for How, another. What you do you think about? I, I think I think it's Scumway. all night lies. That's what I think. I think you're right. It's on night lies. So, so basically, right. a whole new code base to find bugs in, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like so, what's better, the old crappy code base that Adobe makes with a ton of bugs in it, or a whole brand new or the code new base crappy code base that, that no hasn't been it hasn't wait, been wait, tested wait, or seen Let before. me ask a question, guys. Was my understanding, and I might show my ignorance here, that that Mozilla before this was going for the approach of HTML5 and and trying to sort yep. of mm. push Flash away, but now I they come up with this. Now they come up with this, um, which seems to be a step in the wrong direction. Discuss. No, you bring up a great point because I was just thinking about that. I thought HTML5 was going to do away with Flash, especially after Apple said, there shall not be Flash. Flash. And so I don't know what the hell's going on here. And then we talked about what was it two weeks ago that uh, YouTube is going away with Flash and moving to HTML5. Because right. Of so, so no where's Flash. the motivation? Where is the motivation to do this? Because am, Flash computer. sucks. A lot of flesh. There's a lot of flesh out there. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is this is really a okay. So that that's a relevant point, I suppose. So this is a uh, sort of um, uh, backwards compatibility legacy kind of issue. Um, now we know of one pretty large company that's got bitten pretty hard by that in the past. Um, me thinks this is not a good idea. But I mean, we said for years that well, you know, Flash is going to go away for this HTML5 thing, and here we are years later. And Flash is still everywhere. Yeah. So we're we back to just embracing it and going, maybe we just need a better Flash player in the browser. Oh, God. Like we, we need another know. bet. We needed a better Adobe reader, right? We need a better <laughs> hammer. Yeah. The lack of Media Flash on iOS, though, really has influenced websites. So you do see oh, yeah. a lot of sites that offer non Flash variants of things these days. I mean, this is a good thing, right? People will adapt. The content providers have adapted. Um, and, I, and need, actually, I need my Pornhub. I mean YouTube on my phone. <laughs> we actually did started I say move, Pornhub. Where did that? I didn't. Hear, I heard YouTube into much more interactive mobile content that worked without Flash Pornhub, and um, <laughs> it, it was a good thing, right? So um, yeah, this seems to be a step in the wrong direction. I don't know. I'm disappointed. Does, I just does, am. Does Does Pornhub work on your phone? I don't think. It, yeah, you got to oh, check. Sorry, right. within the show. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I've never tried it. <laughs> <clears throat> Only for three minutes. That's about as long as most porn lasts for me. <laughs> no, that's not how long they last. That's just how long you need. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a night lie. 
<laughs> it's a night it's lie. A night. <laughs> Didn't Bob Seger sing a song about night? Anyway. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that was not lying. That, that was lying. That was moving. No, was hey, so this week I found stories that report vulnerabilities in embedded systems. No in, way. In a wireless router. No way. Yep. There's vulnerability. no way you did that, Paul. I don't I, believe it. It's really brand new, too, this week. Vulnerability in Netgear devices. And then I also found a story that covered a WordPress vulnerability. I was just going to say WordPress. So no this, way. Yes. Two, we're two for two this week. I was so excited to see that. In fact, I, every week I spend looking for... I gotta have my WordPress story, and I gotta have my embedded device, Internet of Things hacking related story. Those two things are every Given. week you can find one. The WordPress one is very interesting, actually. It's not a vulnerability that's gonna stop the Internet in its tracks. However, it was reported to WordPress. Otherwise, it would have a really nice logo. <laughs> yes, this is true, and it's a cutesy name. Um, yeah. <laughs> this bug was reported eight months ago and was not fixed. The bug finder went to a conference. This is interesting. Where the uh, someone from the WordPress you know project or whatever was there to get a hold of someone and was blown off. The bug finder, uh, I shouldn't call him the bug finder. It's, it is an actual person. But he released a patch, which was never applied to the WordPress code tree. Um, and while it appears that the bug is not very easily exploitable, um, it did, so the researcher's name, this is why I didn't put it in there, because I can't even say Knightley's right. Scott Arkazuski. Sure, wow. we'll go with Scott Arkazuski. That's who the person who found this particular bug. Um, it has to do with uh, the salting of passwords um, and using devu random versus userland rng. Um, which has been debatable. So while he says it isn't something that may impact WordPress now, a few years down the road, it could things change, and it, it, it could. Um, so it's kind of interesting. So the assertion here in this article that, that it doesn't use a, sec- a cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator, right, um, which is impacting the password encryption functions, correct, sir? Oh, what he that's, said. Yeah, that's what I would agree with what sure. you're getting at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Drink. Everybody drink. Um, well, that's um, that is uh, that is the real meat and potatoes, and should have been paid attention to. I think. Um, is it a um, holy? You know. Oh my God! The world is falling down. Kind of thing. Um, no, but it is significant. Well, good on the researcher, by the way. He was. Very determined on this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to go to the conference in Orlando, right? <laughs> I mean, Honestly, almost. I think that's the story, right? That's it the... is, yeah. Yeah, almost that is the story. Fresh. And then developed his own bug fix? Yeah. yeah. He has a patch that they won't apply. <laughs> or they, won't, they won't merge into the. Co- he he co- is, uh, he's intent on this one. I wonder if he stands outside like the WordPress offices with like a boombox over his head. Just like, <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> nice. Does, does the uh, boombox play pseudo random hey, music? Or? <laughs> hey, hey, not oh, random enough. It's got to go. It's not. It's not user land random music. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, that went. But too you're far. correct. Like every week, there's another WordPress vault. It's or in a plugin. It's 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 like why why. People keep running this. It's yeah. so bad. We, we've been doing this podcast 10 years, and I don't think we've gone a week. Without, it used to be the joke that there was like another WordPress vuln or plugin vuln for like since WordPress has been released. Can you add, can you add Mike? He just sent an email and said he was waiting. Yeah. So he's on Skype. You guys just need to add him. Thank you. Well, we did have a good lot, a lot of time there with, with fun with Adobe, too. So there was, uh, there's was been some you – know, that, that fun has, has always been – been good good times i mean yeah, over the past you know 10 years we've been doing the show we have to thank people like adobe and wordpress and all the embedded device manufacturers for giving us just such awesome things to talk about because <laughs> without them you know we'd be resorted to talking about things that really matter i don't know they make the show possible they make the show possible yes they certainly do Microsoft is just so damn happy that it's now the applications that are getting attacked. That's all I can say. It's true. It's so, uh, Andrew, and that's something that I've been kind of unscientifically presenting uh, it, it, to people is that when I ask people like Larry and Joff to do pen testing, uh, you guys both are on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. from a defensive perspective, what, what are you guys seeing in terms of the ability of an organization to patch the operating system? 
Has that gotten better in the past five years? You think we made progress there? Yeah, and specifically because of Windows automated patching on Patch Tuesday. That yeah. really with, did, was the, and go with ahead. the caveat that with the caveat that there's been quite a spate of bad patches lately. That is true. Yeah, SMCC. So most of the organizations that I've worked with usually have uh, about a week or two after Patch Tuesday. Well, they'll you know if they're smart, they'll roll it out to some sort of test bed. But usually they just watch press to see if there's bad patches. But you're mm-hmm. right, lately. Uh, regression testing has apparently been sucking wind at Microsoft. But in general, yeah, it seems like the OS level stuff, at least primarily for Microsoft, at desktop is patched pretty well. Server, eh, third party, forget about it. <laughs> so that was my next question. Third party is still a complete it's train a wreck. Oh my gosh, yeah. And that's yeah. what everyone that's what everyone tells me. And yeah, I can find stats from Symantec and everything, but I like to be able to say that I actually talk to people that corroborated my story and, and that's kind of what i experienced too is that yeah, so because when, is that because of the inability to apply those patches are they just harder to apply or people don't care like what, what is it i'll give my two cents then and jerry feel free to chime in after me but i, I think it's two things i think there isn't a, an easy automated tool for all the third-party patching like there is for windows with sccm and other stuff along those lines and i I think in general that the desktop variance is so high, especially in environments where they don't take away admin access to the endpoints, that you name it is to put out there and they don't have good asset management, so they don't even know what's out there. Yeah, I, I was about to say, guys, you know, hygiene is a big part of this because when I'm pen testing, uh, what I'm running into is, is um, usually hygiene problems that gets me that, that foothold. Um, not necessarily um, patching issues. Um, patching issues sometimes, uh, but once you get that first foothold out of a out of a hygiene kind of issue, and hygiene kind of issue in sort of the Windows domain environment is going to be, um, uh, you know, something like uh, group policy preferences, uh, yep. le- leaving keys around, or, or um, you know, unattended installs. It's going to be stuff like that um, that that we're going to get, or or it's going to be some application level level thing that's that's you know storing passwords insecurely or something. Um, that gives gives us that excel- escalation point or that foothold point, and then after that, you know, it's not it's not really about exploitation once you get that foothold. So, you know, the other thing I'd say real quick is that, in general, the only reaction most IT groups have to a security vulnerability is to patch, and they don't think beyond that. They, they very rarely are thinking about what else in the security stack can I utilize. So there's a lot of times I see where, hey, we've got you know we saw this just recently. We had some flash O days that came out, and it was a couple of days before a patch came out. And the whole time, they're just ass flying in the wind, hoping they don't get hit. You know, they, that's, all they, that's all they can do. It's, it's, it's patch management. It's not vulnerability management. Right. And, you know, so I'm asking questions to people like, can we unload Flash? No. Can right. we block Flash at the proxy? No. Can we do anything other than just hope? No. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Oh, that's right. This and, 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 and is yeah, bad. Yeah, that comes. <laughs> that's awesome. That comes back around to you know hygiene and, and configuration management in the environment, right? You, you mentioned a yeah. few of them, and uh, um, I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but it's not really a dead horse. A lot of it comes back to the the top twenty critical controls that the, the Sans crew uh, publishes. Um, it really matters, right? Where what are your assets? What's your hardware and software assets? What's your configuration hygiene on your network switches, routers, firewalls, IPS, IDS, whatever. You know, wh- what is all that stuff and do you have it under decent process management and doing a, a good job of it? Because if you don't, you're going to get pwned um, flat out, um, you know, pen test or not, it's going to happen. <laughs> you can you can get a, what, what would you call it, a unsolicited pen test, i.e. you can get hacked, but, uh, you know. Free uh, code basic, on it. Basic blocking it, it, and tackling IT hygiene, you know. It, it's it's hygiene. That that's where it really matters. Microsoft can't do anything about that, or any of these other vendors. They can patch, 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 and I my hats is off to to the schedule that Microsoft's come up with on the OS layer. They've really done a good job, right? Um, better than most, but um, they can't they cannot stop people from shooting themselves in the foot. And if that keeps happening, well, we stay employed. I mean, that's that's a good thing for us. But. <laughs> and to be honest, with most of the organizations I've interacted with, they're barely keeping their head above water and just general IT stuff. So to get them to be aggressive enough on security stuff is really hard. Yeah, they, don't care. they don't care. What? They're going to care? <laughs> wow, what are it, we turning into morning varies, radio? <laughs> uh, in my experience, it, it varies. 
Um, yeah, we yeah, have sure. we have some customers that have actually gotten very very good and very organized um, in, in world class, which is fantastic. Uh, but then we do have the other end of the uh, spectrum where. <laughs> Folks are really struggling to keep their head above water. And, you know, Larry and Paul are just not paying any attention at all. So, you know, hey, back to you, Paul. It's your show. We are paying attention. I'm just finding a service that I think you would absolutely love, Joff. I would. If you go to F-O-A-A-S.com. Mm-hmm. Are you, you, bad, are you bad to fish me, man? Nope. Come on. I promise. You, you promise just, that you will fish him? It's or not fuck fish off him. as a service. It's a restful. Oh. <laughs> it is, in fact, a restful interface. Ooh, wow! They've got a, a scalable API? solution to the common problem of telling people to fuck off. So, <laughs> no matter what, no matter what you throw at this API, it's just going to tell you to fuck off. No, <laughs> That's no, it's, awesome. It's it's good. It's interesting. Wow, people. Some people have got too much time on their hands. Yep. Yeah. Um, I read a really cool article on why. Things should be more difficult to use. It's it's kind of what? difficult to summarize this whole article. Um, Which number one is this of your thing? This is my story number five. Uh, it's some great writing, and it came from Wired, which mm. usually I don't say that in the same sentence. Interesting. But, um, of course, my my example is Vim. Yeah, sure. First, it's really it's hard to use yeah. it first. Once you master it, he, he says that, like people. Um, really kind of gain um, a lot of confidence <laughs> and feel good about themselves once they've mastered something. They say the video game industry has done this really well. Yeah. Like, they make the game just hard enough so that you have to use some skills. I mean, obviously, they could program, what did he say, the princess in Mario Kart to, like, lap you every time you play the game, right? But they program the character so that obviously she slows down a little bit so that if you master some skills, you can pass her and in, in, in beat the game. And so he's kind of talking about how that like human mm -hmm. sociology thing, I don't know if it's sociology, but how that kind of works. Right. Um, same thing with VI, right? Hard to use the first once you master it, you save time and have that feeling that you've mastered something. Not Look, like the feeling you get when you visit Pornhub. That's a different kind of mastery, Larry. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> that makes I mean, me feel if, good. If you, know, if you know how to do colon dot dot plus 10 slash S cat, hash carrot 10 5 Z. cat G colon slash and then hit return and you know what that does? It makes you feel so good. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just you describing it sends chills up my spine, Josh. It does, so doesn't it? Paul? It makes it us want to go to Vegas and drink together again, doesn't it? We do need to do that again this year. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, so. so there's some security things in there too, and it's pretty hilarious the way he describes the security thing. He's just, people will be safer drivers that if coming out of the steering wheel, there was kind of like that big icicle. There's a big gigantic spike that is pointing at you. If that was there, people would be safer drivers, which I. The ones kind of, that survive. The ones that survive. Right. Uh, until survival you, of the fittest. Until you get that guy that's got this vehicle that's grandfathered and doesn't have the big spike, and he slams right. into you from behind. That's right. <sighs> well, and I think, uh, and there'll be a massive economic surge for the underwear industry as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like the idea, you know, combining it with one of those uh, dog shot collars. Yeah. And uh, you know, f uh, opening attachments. I think awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but see, we as hackers, we'd get bored with that, and we'd have to hack the shot caller, so like we'd have a button on our desk and be like, hey, watch this, I can buzz all my users at once. Like, yeah. Wait wow. for the pretty girl to walk by, zap her so she falls down. I see where you're going with this. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, you know, I struggled with this one a little bit because I, I agree that there is something absolutely intrinsically correct about what he's saying. When you have a game that you're playing that's just hard enough to challenge you, there's a sense of reward when you beat it. But at the same time, I remember back in when dinosaurs roamed and I was coming up in, in the IT field and how difficult it was to learn stuff. And at the time, especially, you know, we're talking 2400 baud modem days, nobody shared information until you proved you're worthy of sharing information with. And so That's there's that whole standing on the shoulder of giants thing too, right? So I don't know. I'm of two minds on this one. 
Was that when you learned to program with, with punch cards, Andrew? Is that I did. I did, actually. Uh, you know, I, I first started with a loom, and then I went to <laughs> punch cards. Wow. And you know what? I got that joke. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Good. And then he went over to the eight switches on front of the mainframe and keyed in the first byte to boot the damn thing. And I had and one then he keyed on. in the second byte. <laughs> <laughs> have, uh, speaking of that, uh, not that era, but after that, have you guys watched that show Halt and Catch Fire that I talked about no, that last week? Yeah, you did, but no, yeah. I have not. That's a really good one. Is it good? It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Yeah, it's about Silicon Prairie. It's really good. I think I did mention that last week. Oh, <laughs> I cool. So, so my brother I'm last for week. Chris to take this. <laughs> Chris, hurry up and take it before it. My my excellent, <laughs> my excellent Australian brother was here with me last week. So what did we do apart from geek out the entire week? We decided to um, uh, watch a show that he introduced me to, actually, that I'd never seen before. It's quite an old one called The IT Crowd. It's a uh, British show. Uh, yeah. That one is good fun. You've there, never so. seen The IT Crowd? I have not seen it. Wow. I guess you've I never, well, hold on. You've never seen Sneakers. You've never seen The IT Crowd. Are you telling me that you haven't watched Hackers or... I think I've been working too much. <laughs> when? In like 1990? Something? Yeah. <laughs> you mad, bro? Uh, I'm mad. You, you, uh, remember, you remember when we actually got permission to play the IT Crowd theme we did. song? On we the, did. We did. On the show? Yeah. Uh, that, nice. That's all. Awesome. It is a good fun show. But the, uh, the other thing we did, of Well, course, Jop, we already knew that because we watched it when it came out. Yeah, several, thanks, Paul. Several yeah. years ago. It, 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 illegally. Because, <laughs> I mean... Um, in 2007. Yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> thanks, Paul. I did root my phone last week, too, while I was bored, too. That, so that was... Uh, Intentionally uh, or otherwise? No, intentionally. <laughs> not no, not Jump, accident. You need to get caught up with movies and TV shows, dude. You've dude, got some homework. too busy. No. <laughs> John That's needs important. to give you a vacation. That's important, it's dude. It's research. You have homework, yes. I... I had a research vacation last week. Well, yeah, now no, you, now that's you, not that's a. Now you have research to do this week. That's right. I need to stop working so hard. Is that what you're saying? No, you have research. No, to do. you just need to watch these geek shows. What are some other geek shows that Joff may not have seen? Apparently, all of them. Apparently. <laughs> Okay, Pir- don't Pirates of Silicon good. Valley. <laughs> have you seen Pirates of Silicon Valley, Joff? I have not. <laughs> oh my oh. god. Do you how did these people? I, I don't how did he get me. on this show anyway? Who, who, the, who invited me? Who did the screening <laughs> process for Joff? Damn it! You did. <laughs> no, actually, Shit. I think that was John Strand. It was John Strand. <sighs> well, so you can. I bet, he, I bet I never saw Firefly either. <laughs> I did. No, no, I totally oh. watched the entire series okay. of Firefly. Well, oh. I feel a little better now. Thanks, Andrew, for. <sighs> Bring that out. That, thanks, Andrew, for saving me. Yes. <laughs> Job, you can stay. Um, yeah. Who's got so, time for TV? Jeez. Oh, so, Paul, you, you never told us your opinion on this story. What, what do you think which, about the mastery thing? The, the things need to be hard. I, well, I think, it, I think there is some merit to it. Things can be hard. Especially if you want to have children. It, it's important. It's true. Um, it's true. <laughs> I, I, it's for me the video game is, is kind of interesting because I, I, I like playing video games, of course, but I, I really suck. At them. <laughs> you know what? Me too. I, I love really, playing, I love playing I, I video, love games. video games, but I suck at them so uh, bad. You, so we got the Wii U for for Christmas for the, for me. This and your kid, <laughs> and your kids now kick oh your my ass. God, yeah. Cor- Corinne has uh, she. We got Mario 3D World and uh, Disney Infinity. And I have really not played Disney Infinity and all, but she is uh, like almost all the way through Super Mario 3D World, and like I, I can't, I'm, I got no game. So, <laughs> so here's here's a funny story for you, right? So my son decides he wants, he's 19. Okay, shows you how old I am. My son decides he wants a Wii U game for Christmas last year. So my wife runs out and buys the Wii U game. Because we don't have a Wii U console. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. And, and Christmas Day comes up. And he says, oh, thanks. He goes, where's the console? And we're like, oh, you mean you got to buy a console to go along with this? <laughs> wow. Oops. Yeah. I was playing ping pong. She did not consult me. <laughs> I was playing ping pong against my son on the Wii. Yeah, he totally kicked my ass. Nice. Yeah, he's, he's six. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that only gets better, Paul. You yeah. wait. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. 
All right. Well, Larry, what do you have for story? Sorry, I've been. No, it's that's no, cool. That's cool. Oh, we... I saw the Sam. Tell me about the Samsung TV thing spying on you. I saw that. I, yeah, I, well, so I had that in my stories. It's not so much spying no, on you. No, it's what the, they claim. the audio the audio thing, right? Right, right. So when with the the new Samsung TVs, you can do voice control, and they've got uh, a bunch of built-in commands that it understands and will do right there locally. But some of the more esoteric ones, um, they have to take the data and send it to a quote third party to be translated and then uh, sent back the commands to the TV so it knows what to do. Very much like Siri. Uh, when you ask Siri a question, it sends it off to a third, to to off the phone over the internet um, or the 3G networks and then sends stuff back. Um, also, uh, so they send that data out and takes the audio recording and sends it off to that third party to be analyzed. Now, the th audio is not over HTTPS. It's over HTTP. And it is in a well-known audio format, and folks were able to recover um, the, the audio from that stuff. So, now, when, you know, wait, could they... Is this, like, on by default, and they can use it as a listening device, or is this... I've the entered into, like on my phone to do voice, right? I have to like push something. Yep. So also on <coughs> your phone, if you have it plugged in and you have one setting turned on, you can say, hey, Siri. It has to be uh, plugged in. It has to be plugged in and the setting has to be on. Right. And you can say, hey, Siri. Talk dirty to me. Hey, Siri, what's the weather outside? outside? And it will detect that it said, you said, hey, Siri. And then it will go do its commands. Very much similar with Samsung TV. This service is always on. And if you say, hi, TV, it then takes the next com things you say and it, does the commands. It invokes F-A-A-S. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that would be awesome. Really. Hi, TV. Far off. <laughs> yes. Um, so with that... Samsung says, well, yeah, we're not taking everything and sending it to the third party, which maybe I agree with, and the microphone's not always on and listening. I disagree. Because if the microphone is not always on and listening, how the hell does the TV know that you just said, hi, TV? Yeah, it's clearly on. It's just yeah. not sending. Yeah, it's right. just not sen sending. So, Well, right. that we know of. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, true. Now, that said, we can look at the network traffic because it's all in HTTP for stuff that's un unusual <laughs> commands being sent off. Um, now, I, I'm thinking about... Yeah, this had they encrypted it in SSL, it would have been... Right. Oh, wait, never mind. Wait, with a <laughs> certificate. <laughs> yeah. We established that at the that, beginning. We of the covered segment. that already. Yeah. Paul. yeah well, <laughs> well, well, there's no super fish on the T. Wait, maybe there is. <laughs> That's the big story, though. Is is just the uh, it, that is unencrypted because, I mean, Amazon has their Echo, which is you know a purpose built appliance that you put in your house that whose sole purpose is to listen to your conversation. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are we doing this? Why? Were we not warned? Did we not read? <sighs> I, I, for one, accept and yes, my my yep. new overlords. <laughs> you, you accept and embrace the surveillance state, Larry? I mean, without that, I wouldn't have a job, I guess. Wait, Jerry, go back. I haven't heard about this Amazon Echo thing. They really have a device? That, yeah. And what does it well, do? Yeah, like, buy stuff? Uh, it's a, it looks like kind of, it reminds me of a Polycom conference. Yeah phone you know those were you put it in your house and uh you know and it'll uh kind of listens to your you, you know your questions you can ask it you know for recipes or or mm -hmm. uh um, you know measurements and stuff like that so you can convert cups to tablespoons that sort of stuff voice recognition hears you from across the room yeah. <laughs> so does the nsa exactly and does it automatically populate your your cart in amazon that would be cool I think it does, actually. Add gelato to my shopping list. <laughs> I want the 55-gallon drum of lube. That's, <laughs> that's, that's on my Amazon wish, oh, wish in, list. In the banana slicer. Yes. Banana <laughs> banana slicer. <laughs> Somebody recently figured out the heaviest thing you could order off Amazon to, with Amazon Prime. It was like a 6,000-pound safe that you free shipping on. I'm like, wow, that's got to hurt them. That's terrible. Anyway, off top. <laughs> Now, now, now I have to go up. find that, Andrew, to see for myself. Right? I don't know if it's still there. This was like a year ago. No okay. problem. And you can return it, too. Yeah. 30-day <laughs> money-back guarantee. <laughs> Take this 6,000 pounds back. It's not working for my boat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Nice. Oh, what is this pen tester's pledge, Larry? Uh, this uh, so this was kind of neat. So I pulled this out of the article that uh, Mark Baggett wrote up on custom Metasploit payloads. And he said, after doing my pen tester's pledge, and I'm like, what is this pen tester's pledge you speak of? So Ed Scotus came up with the pen tester's pledge, which is, in fact, I'm going to read it off your screen, with I, state your name, to hereby pledge to use PS exec. I, state your name. To, oh, uh, to, sorry, I wasn't repeating. To use PS exec to exploit Windows target machines after I have g- gained admin credentials and SMB access of the target environment. I shall forsake other service side exploits thereafter. Otherwise, I un- <laughs> unnecessarily risk crashing target systems. Mike, how true? I mean, why do you need to launch more exploits after you've got potentially local admin and SMB Did, access? Just use PS didn't, exec. Didn't I already make that point tonight? I'm just saying. I think so. Yeah, I think so. You made a lot of points tonight. Yep. <laughs> oh, Paul, you're just saying that. We made lots of points too, but mostly with icicles. That's right. And my big so, point was night lies. That was <laughs> Night lies. You've <laughs> got to make sure your night lies are up to date. Yes. Yes. So what we're learning here is that really the primary vulnerability is is Active Directory, and we should just get rid of that. Right. Um, no. Because we, we, awesome. we should we should go That's with some a- other Kerberos based ticketing system. <laughs> <laughs> and you just like dropped the bomb and then like left. That was like grenade. Yeah. Threw the hand grenade. Because <laughs> oh no, you, we should totally drop Active Directory and go to Novell. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, P directory. <laughs> they were so close, man. They smoke almost and, had it. Smoke and mirrors, maybe, man. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> maybe Mozilla can build something in the browser. No, That's right. I mean, yeah, I, I don't actually think that, but it's funny how often local admin rights leads to AD transversal leads to domain admin, and then they own the shop. It's like, but it's not about Active Directory. It's about poor hygiene. That's what. Dis- I don't disagree. That's true. Uh, because you know we have solutions for most of it. Um, we just don't one, use them. The one that is a sticking point, I will admit, is the widespread local admin. A lot of people have a really hard time with that because the operational argument back is, yeah. but I need that because if this machine becomes detached from the domain for long enough, I need a way to recover. And it's a valid argument, and it's a difficult thing to manage a local administrative credential on thousands and thousands of machines when it's not common. So that is a particularly difficult sticking point, but there are mechanisms out there. There's blogs written about it. There are ways to do it. It just takes a lot of effort. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned the local admin thing. The sad part about that is uh, before that one patch that Microsoft came out with, uh, what was that one? The one that prevents local admin login from remote to non-domain controller machines. Um, It was so trivial to pivot around an environment at that point that it was an egregious wide open hole. That patch actually did some good. Um, That that particular patch did some good, but it doesn't stop uh, the the exploitation because if you've got a red 500 account, you still get there. Um, But anyway. No, Wait, I think did I get on a did I get on like a soapbox there for a minute? Sorry about that, (laughs) dude. You've been on the soapbox the entire show. What are you talking I know. About? You love me for that. I bowl, started man. you out on the soapbox, though, so it is. You part did. Of my you did right. wind me up, man. I did. You know, the one thing I will say is that from, from the blue team side, we absolutely, completely suck ass at catching internal lateral movement of bad guys. Once they're inside the door, even a little bit, once, once they're past that perimeter, most organizations are deaf, dumb, and blind. And there's so many opportunities to catch that activity, and we suck at it. You know, that, you know, you're right. It's funny. I, I wrote um, a goal paper fairly recently, and, and this is not just shameless self promotion. But I was talking about Windows Wait, Event. What's, 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 a, what's a gold paper? Is that like the Australian version of a white paper? It is. <laughs> oh. Cheers. No, I'm not doing. It's a Sans thing, but um, uh, oh okay. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I talked about uh, some of the um, things you can look at in uh, Event Logger related to pivoting activities. And you can look at them uh, and determine what's normal and what's not normal. The question is, are you looking at them? Um, You know, people have, it seems like a real hard time correlating event logs and actually spending time examining them. Uh, And that's, that's, that's why when we get into an environment and we pivot around mercilessly, nine times out of 10, we just do that unimpeded. Yeah. 
Larry, wow. Did you have more stories, Larry? Um, yes. But uh, there was another one that was interesting um, that I haven't had a lot of time to, to look up on. Uh, but one to get you guys um, equations group. Oh yeah, please yeah. fill me in. Uh, that's a frightening one. Um, it's ugly. Yeah, Larry. I'm gonna mean, go go ahead. You you oh. got the good. Right? No, no. So I honestly don't have a lot of. Um, I, I saw a lot about it, but I just didn't get a chance to look at um, stuff about it. So I was hoping you guys could tell me something about it. Well, well, the the part that really scared me as I was reading a little bit was. Um, the idea that uh, this group has been working for, you know, over a decade, is my understanding, mm. uh, on uh, malware at the firmware level for um, drives, uh, you know, media storage media. So, so like bad BIOS type stuff. Yeah, um, and they've gotten it so good that they can, um, you know, store data away on the drives uh, for later retrieval. Um, they can exfiltrate it, uh, was my understanding. Uh, and it is completely invisible to the operating system. Uh, is this the one they called Fanny? It is the one they called Fanny. That's right. Um, and that <laughs> the, name. the assertion here from, I think it was Kaspersky, <clears throat> was that the spyware that, that's on the firmware, um, and the, the assertion here is more than a dozen, uh, uh manufacturers, uh, you know, uh, you, your big ones, Western Digital, Seagate, et cetera. Um, that um, these these have been infected for years uh, with with this malware. So this to me was very very disturbing um, that you know we could have uh, infected malware on drives that's been around for a long long time. Now the thing I haven't followed up on is has this uh, uh, also been um, ported over to the SSD uh, industry as well? Ooh. I suspect it probably Ooh. has, but uh, I don't know. But that's. Uh, it's kind of a frightening thing. I don't know. I'm sure somebody else has a comment on all that. But One thing I will say, my initial thought is, okay, let's assume this is actually happening. It isn't hype. And let's assume this is out in the world in, in a recently, a reasonably sized footprint. How much do we suck at egress monitoring that we never caught any of our, any of this activity? Exactly. Ever? Well, and, I, you know, I, my counter to that is in, in some of my reading that, uh, some of this malware, actually, its intent was to partition some sectors off the drive and write data there for later retrieval and never to exfiltrate it across the network. So we may not have seen it. That, that, I'm sure some of that, absolutely. But others, uh, it was clearly exfiltrating. And I think, you know, a couple things on that. We just trust outbound data for whatever reason. And, uh, the purpose of the purpose of Fanny was to to hop air gap networks, right? So it was it was uh, you know it, its primary target was USB drives that would move between computers, hopefully computers that were sensitive and air gapped, and it would copy data to a hidden partition, and when it was reattached to a device that was on the network that was infected with Fanny, it would pull down that that data off of the hidden partition and upload it to the command and control server. And I think that's the opportunity that, you know, that we would have seen catch it. Um, so, you know, I, I, it's interesting when you go back and look at some of the history, if you, if you search for, uh, Google for fanny.bmp, you can find some old uh, threads or forum threads about people trying to find out how to get rid of that thing. So people knew that it was going on, and I think there was one that showed it was, uh, I think, from 2011 that uh, something like 37 of the roughly 40 AV engines and virus total were catching it. So, uh, okay, you know, so so they knew about it. They didn't know how to get rid of it. Um, right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then it probably fell to the wayside because people are like, well, okay. Uh, there's this this short attention span issue, right? I mean, it's like, mm, well, we got to move on to bigger bigger fish, right? Yes. What did you guys say? Oh, right. Oh. Make, make it go again. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Fanny dot BMP. That's right. That's what people are searching be, for. Be, be careful with that. Yes, that could be dangerous. Don't, don't do the image search. Do the right. Image. I gotcha. <laughs> do the 
Oh, now, I'm gonna do, now I'm going to do the image search just because. <laughs> lemon, did le- the image lemon party search. wouldn't be a party without some old, old dick. dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think. I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think I also read that they had alleged that this was actually being installed in the hard drives actually by intercepting the shipments, not via traditional um, exploitation attempts. There's one that thing part, I read. Yeah, that part wasn't very clear to me. I think yeah. some, I know some of the, I think Fanny was. I'm not sure that Fanny was actually the hard drive infector. I think there was a different piece of malware that was was rewriting the, the hard drive firmware. But um, wait, was that something inside Fanny? Is that what you're no, saying? No, I don't think so. I'm pretty oh, sure Fanny okay. was specifically targeted at USB Steve drives. Got but that. anyway, thanks, the, Steve. The, <laughs> Steve the thing, Paul, <laughs> Paul, if you have something inside your Fanny, you should <laughs> see it. <laughs> you should see a doctor about that immediately. <laughs> and if it lasts for more than four hours, <laughs> you probably took some of Jack's pills. Mm-hmm. So uh, what, what concerns me is this stuff is relatively old. I knew right? I should have taken the blue pill. This is this stuff. The, the things in that report are you know 2001 through 2010. You know, vintage. I I got to wonder. You know, and I think one of the reports said that. Most of this infrastructure was shut down at sometime in 2014, you know, presumably because they've moved on to something more sophisticated. Well, it, that, that highlights a couple of things, I think. Yeah. I mean, good, good security research takes time. I mean, it takes a lot of time, right? Um, which, unfortunately, means that uh, you know, on, the, on the defense side, uh, the, the odds are way stacked against us. Yeah, and the, the other thing that concerns me greatly is the uh, you can guarantee that there's a lot of criminal enterprises in other you know other uh, lesser countries looking at this and figuring out how they can adopt these techniques. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the problem with the nation state argument. It doesn't once the technique is out there, it's very easy for others to co-opt it. So it's very difficult to attribute something to a nation state in my mind. Sorry to branch off into that, but so, uh, Jerry and Andrew, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about, uh, first of all, a, a little bit about your backgrounds, and then I want to ask you a little bit about your podcast as we kind of round things out here. Sure. Go ahead, Andy. Sure. Um, where to start? Uh, I've been in IT security most of my career. I uh, grew up in Detroit, and I escaped. I live in Atlanta now. And uh, Jerry and I worked together initially a long, long time ago at a, one of the first sort of managed service providers kicking around, a company called Netrix that got bought by ISS. And so I went to work for ISS down here in Atlanta, and then I went to work for Checkpoint and spent a lot of good years there and decided to beat my head against the startup wall. So then I went and played around with a couple of startups. Uh, Dumbala, which did uh, still around botnet defense and detection. Then I went to um, Algosec, which did firewall auditing, mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Left them and went to Acuvant, where I had a good couple of years there and just recently left and currently doing uh, security architecture for a company called Elevon, which is a division of U.S. Bank. So uh, most of my career has been kicking around you're the operational side or the sales engineering side of, of IT security, primarily focused around, you know, most of my, uh, I'd say, stronger areas are, are around uh, network security layer type stuff. But, um, but I've known Jerry since we were wee lads a long, long, early, long time ago. Early 90s, yep. Yeah. And, Did uh, Jerry have hair back then? He did. I can even show you pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it, is thir- it is Thursday. You know what that means. Throwback oh, Thursday. Yeah. Throwback That's Thursday. Right. So, Jerry, how did, uh, how did you get your start? What's your background? Uh, so, uh, I, uh, my, my background is a bit in, into the industrial space. So, kind of out of, out of high school, I went and worked for an electroplating shop. And uh, it, was, it, it was one of those uh, life lessons Right, really great place to have worked, uh, but it was it was hard, and um, I, I learned a lot. I went from there to actually work at Netrex with with Andy, and uh, that company got bought by ISS. Uh, I rose kind of through the ranks, ultimately became a director of IT at uh, at ISS, and then uh, IBM came along and bought us up, and I still remain there. I keep trying to tell him he needs to leave, though. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I'm at IBM right now. Cool. 
But Jerry and I, uh, uh, yeah. So, Jerry, so you guys started to do a podcast together. What, whatever possessed you to embark <laughs> on that <laughs> journey? Come <laughs> on, guys, so, it started a podcast. Yeah, I'm not sure. I still question that. But go on, Jerry. <laughs> so, so a couple of years ago, in 2012, I, um, you know, I, I, I really hadn't been in podcasts or I hadn't really paid attention to podcasts up to that point. And I started listening to it, and I got a little frustrated because I, you know, I was, I was on the defensive side and there wasn't much defensive, uh, you know, defensive content in terms of podcasts. It was, it was very, very heavily slanted towards offensive techniques. You know, in, uh, the ISD podcast was going and a, a number of others. And uh, at the same time, we were seeing lots of, uh, you know, lots of very public breaches going on. So I just had this idea, Hey, let's, uh, I'm going to start a podcast talking about you know, the, these breaches that are happening in the public and wh what can we learn from them? And uh, so I did that for, uh, I guess, about eight months. And uh, Andy and I were talking and, um, you know, we, 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 I think we complement each other pretty well. So, uh, you know, I brought him on the show and that's, uh, I think, uh, about a, almost two years now. Yeah. He's been with us. Crazy, Crazy bastards. Him. Two years? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we were just riffing at a party, and uh, it's, uh, I think because Jerry and I have known each other so long, we have slightly differences of opinion, but enough to make right. for some interesting conversation and, you know, different experiences in different areas of the industry. And, um, you know, Jerry's good at being the straight man, and I like to be the snarky commentary, so it works out well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I wish we had that balance. We're pretty much all snarky commentary <laughs> yeah <laughs> jerry you're gonna have to come on and be the be the balance for us too <laughs> oh paul come on now i'm a lover here man come on dude you've been on fire this episode joff like i can't even keep <laughs> yes. you under control or remotely try and keep you under control it's yeah. a good thing though i like uh, i like the out of control joff yes thank <laughs> you we should do five questions have uh -oh. you guys um have you guys heard the five questions before i i, uh, I have Okay. So, three words to describe yourself. I'll start with Jerry. Oh, boy. Um, That's two. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. That doesn't count. Uh, uh, boy. That's great. Stressed, stressed, and stressed. Andrew? How about that? Uh, cranky, opinionated, and caffeinated. Andrew, if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Katana. Jerry? Oh, boy. I got to go with chlorine. Ooh. Jerry, Ooh. if you were to write a book about <laughs> yourself, what would the title be? Oh, boy. <laughs> Can I pass? <laughs> that's a good title. That's a good title. Oh, boy. Title. There we go. That's a great... That's a, actually, that, that's what it would be called. Oh, can boy, I can I pass. Andrew, there over to you. Sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> uh, excellent. <laughs> Andrew, in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Oh, first. Jerry? I, I got to go second. Absolutely. It's into like a matched pair right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> you, you guys are perfect for each other. Jerry, choose two celebrities to be your parents. Oh, um. That's a hard one, I know. Crap. Crap. You can think no. of the dad, and then you start thinking of the mom, and you start thinking of women Big you're attracted to, and, and then that sounds weird because she's going to be your mom, and then you become a Freudian experiment. <laughs> see, see, I understand the thought that process. That is the problem right there. That's it is. exactly the problem. It, so you got to go with Angelina Jolie. Yes! Yes! That is right? the most popular wait, wait, wait. answer. Oh, wait, wait. Pre or post-surgery? Oh, oh, definitely oh. pre. Okay. Definitely. You know what? Just checking. You know what? I, I'm going to change that. Sandra Bullock. Okay. Oh, all so right. The Net is your Fine, favorite run, hacker run. movie of all time, Jerry. I see. Okay. It's okay. There's a bomb on the mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, boy, I guess Vin Diesel. Whoa. You got What's three? Good? Oh, no, that's not true. You just no, th this <laughs> is the 2000s. I mean, that's right. That's right. That's right. It's an open relationship. Andrew, over to you. Two celebrities to be your uh, parents. See, I've had time to think about it. So I'm going to go Clint Eastwood. Mm, good one. All right. And Sigourney Weaver. 
Nice. Oh, oh, nice. There is no Dana, only Zool. That is. <laughs> <laughs> a buffer ah, sheet. Ah, that was good, dude. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Jerry and Andrew, thank you very much <laughs> for coming on Security Weekly and uh, crossing the streams, as it were, on the podcast. So. Yes. Uh, where hopefully, can we, Paul, where can we find the Hopefully podcast? someday we can come on your show because we would love to crash your party as well. No, where, maybe, where can we find their maybe podcast? Maybe we can make this a regular thing where you can come on our podcast, we come on your podcast, and we'll, we'll mix things up. Stir so. drinks with the icicles. Stir <laughs> drinks with the icicles. And, <laughs> and then come sure. on your podcast. Be ridiculous. I, ignore poor Michael Santar Colangelo. I don't know what happened. He, was, he wasn't on Skype, but he said he was. I don't know what happened there, but next time we'll have Santa. He's hanging out with Phil Zimmerman. Yeah. <laughs> So what what happened there? Phil just bailed. He like couldn't handle being on the same show with Jerry. What? what uh, no, I just you know sometimes there's just scheduling miscommunications or yeah. not communicate. It just you know what happened. Uh, do you guys have guests on your show? No. That's <laughs> smart yeah. move. Smart move. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to schedule. Your guests, show runs so. really well, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> yes, um, it does. We also have no sponsors because we've insulted everybody in the industry at this point. So, you know, <laughs> at this point, we've got no fear. It's uh, it's easy that way. We'll, we'll, we'll get the guests that were scheduled for this show uh, on a future show. Um, awesome. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. It, doing this, As, uh, this 10 is not. Years this now. is yeah. This is not the first time it, something like this has happened come, with somebody goes, with like a big name. Territory. And, and like so, H. C. Moore was a prime example. H. C. Moore is going to be on the show, and then like it was like three months uh, before he uh, made it. And yeah, it's it happens. Uh, Did I just? Well, we're here. We're here. Right. That's right. Yes. That's right. So I was going to ask you guys, where can we find your show, and what is the name of it for our listeners? It's, a, it's the Defensive Security Podcast, and you can find it at defensivesecurity.org. Awesome. Well, Andrew and Jerry, thank you very much for being on the show. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and wrap up the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. And that should conclude this show. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We will not be back next week. We're on break next week. And then we've got an absolute marathon. Uh, just ridiculous. It's going to be ridiculous after that. We're recording shows in March, April, May, and June. I think there's no... And even July. I don't know if the fourth holiday. March, April, May, June, though. There's no nothing stopping no us from doing a show that whole time. So... Make sure you tune in for that. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see everyone not next week, but the following week. So, Larry, take us out. Over. And Icicle. Icicle.